Hello everyone, welcome to Edutap and welcome to the success story session. So today we have with us Mr. Prashant who has cleared the RBI grade B and he has become the RBI grade B officer. He has a very impressive journey of becoming the RBI grade B officer that we are going to know today. And he has cleared the RBI grade B in his first attempt with only three months of preparation. Yes, you heard it right, with only three months of preparation. So we are going to understand that what was his strategy, what is his journey of becoming the RBI grade B officer. So first of all, heartiest congratulations to you, sir, for clearing the RBI grade B. Thank you, ma'am. So how does it feel now after becoming the RBI grade B officer? It feels pretty cool, I believe. So when you saw your name, what was the feeling uh, the, after you saw your name in the list? Um, yeah, there is one interesting story about it also. I, I slept in the evening that day on that night of the result. And when I woke up, I saw a message on my phone that, okay, result has come. And it was not supposed to come on that day. So I was like, okay, the mind was blown. Now is the result time. Then I, when I put my rule number on it, and I mistakenly was putting the wrong last three digits. So I thought, okay, nahi hua. Then after I spent five minutes consoling myself. That okay, nahi hua, that what to tell parents, what to tell other friends. And I thought, okay, I might check again. Then I checked again and I thought, okay, calmly check. Then I put the right number and okay, okay, now ho gaya. So it was relief to the fact that okay, nahi hua hai, to ho gaya. Really, really interesting. And what was uh, the reaction of your family? Yeah, they were amazed too because they, they were also not expecting a result on that day. They thought I am calling for normal home routine call. Then they were surprised, yes. Okay. So now, uh, like everyone of the aspirants will like to know your educational background. So can you tell a little about your journey towards the RBI grade B? Like how you, like what is your educational background and how you came to know about the RBI grade B? So I belong to Jaipur. So I finished my schooling from Jaipur itself. Then I graduated from IIT Delhi in a B.Tech degree of engineering physics. And post that, I started my journey as a UPSC aspirant. Mm -hmm. So I started preparing for UPSC. I gave three attempts, reached an interview stage as well. And then this year, uh, uh, this year I gave the interview and finally I couldn't clear them. So I thought, okay, I have to look for other avenues as well. So fortunately, I got to know about RBI from my friends. Initially, I knew about it last year. But uh, this year, when I wanted for a new avenue, the notifications were out. Mm. So that's how I in, got involved in the cycle. Okay. So you just came to know about the RBI grade B when the notification of the RBI grade B was out. Yes. Okay. So like you started preparing after the notification, right? Yes. I pre started preparing, in fact, just five, four days before the last day of uh, submission of the form. Okay, okay. Okay, that is really interesting. But before going towards that, I would like to know that uh, why uh, like you you were preparing for UPSC. So when you shifted uh, to preparing for RBI grade B, was there any advice that came that uh, you should not juggle between the different examinations? Because UPSC is kind of different from RBI. UPSC is more conceptual. RBI is more factual, more and more factual, data-based, we can say. So uh, anyone advised you that uh, you should not juggle between different examinations and especially like uh, the kind of, uh, you have reached till the interview stage. So in the UPSC, so after that. Yes, definitely. There were different kind of advice. Some advice are, okay, do not waste your time. You got one more year. So now you have to give it your best and try to focus on UPSC as well. Because another friends, they were advising that, okay, you should give as many exams as you want. Because in the end, it's just a job. You have to, you cannot clear all the exams you fill form of. So, but to, Apart from the advice, I was very clear in my mind that, okay, I'm giving UPSC, but right now at this stage of uh, my life, I have to give this exam. I was not willing to give any other exam, suppose SBI exam or PO exam or CGL, my friends were suggesting because I was not feeling about it. But when I talked about my friend about RBI exam, I thought, okay, this is a very quick process. This is a good job as well. And the syllabus is also somewhat matching. 
was a of course i have to put an extra effort but i was it was instinctive and so uh, now coming to uh, when you didn't clear the interview stage so what happens that if you are not clearing prelims so you get the idea that okay i'm making some mistake but when you do not clear the interview stage then like you have to start from the start so what was the feeling at that time how did you motivate yourself and came out of that kind of situation yes it was difficult for one one and a half week i was not in my right space so to be honest when i started to figure out what rbi is i, I put on youtube that what is rbi grade b exam what is the pattern and what are the correct cutoffs so that was a part of distracting myself from the loss of upsc's final stage but the, there was a thing if we talk about motivation i had no other choice instinctively if i was feeling that i have to give rbi exam because i'm feeling the form and one thing my father told me uh, once that if you are feeling a form of an exam you are not feeling it to fail the exam it doesn't make a logic that you are feeling a form just to appear and fail if you are feeling a form you have to be you have to give 100% you have to be focused on that exam so then i started focusing on rbi and sooner or later i got over the uk citizen of course it was there it is it is still in my mind but uh that delineating from the starting preparation of rbi was much more okay so we can say that uh, uh, when you didn't clear the interview it was like you directly switched to rbi because the rbi notification was out and so like uh, the preparation of rbi kind of saved you from the mindset that okay i have been clear i have to prepare upsc again and such kind of uh mindset you came out okay and uh, like uh, did you do anything to keep yourself motivated in your preparation journey because you have prepared for upsc for 3 years you also prepared for rbi so in this journey did you do anything to keep yourself motivated like youtube videos dekh liya scroll kar liya ha i get it i get it about the primary motivation there are other things of course i do my hobby i play badminton play guitar as well so that is a part of the thing but about motivation i believe that again i am saying i had no other choice i am giving a exam suppose a person who is in a desert he doesn't need a motivation to walk out of desert you know if he doesn't walk he'll die so i was i am giving an exam if i am spending my investing my time in other exam uh, other than my primary focus of upsc i cannot feel like every day okay i need to be motivated what should i do i, I think i'll drink this and i'll get motivated no i was looking okay, one month is left do this 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 and also my friends group friend group were there they were also having similar situation so they were more depressed than me so somewhat what happens i am like a kind of a in human humorous sense i start to motivate them challenge them then it became a fun journey the motivation becomes the fun part of the game okay so you were preparing with your friend group for rbi also yes okay and how did it happen uh, like all the friends thought that after you pay let's start our rbi or there was a motivating factor no no there was very just as the advice came they they were the person who were giving me advice so there were people who were gave interview with me and couldn't succeed there were people who just gave prelims and couldn't and they were apart from this upsc cycle so they all told me that this is this should not be done the first thing after filling my form i was to do that make them fill the form okay just fill the form please we'll do it i was telling them this is the schedule we'll make it this is the cut off it's not that difficult you have to think step by step and i made them fill the form then they were also part of the journey then okay i thought okay we'll do it we'll do it okay. that was the thing and how like so you st- all started your preparation towards rbi grade b you were the first one that uh, pushed all of them to also give the exam uh, so how did like uh, how helpful a friend group is while preparing because you cleared uh, rbi grade b in 3 months preparation in first try so there must be something extra that happened right so uh, was this the friend group that helped you in the preparation uh, friend group i also want to mention that there was also a friend few friends who motivated me in the first place because mm-hmm. i was of the mindset of upsc nahi to kuch nahi kind of so they were also that you have to give the exam so there were few friends 
I want to credit them that okay, they motivated me, so I motivated other of the friends who then became a friend group here. Yeah. So, uh, what can you pardon your question, please? Yes. Uh, so, uh, what are you, how are you preparing together? Like how this uh, uh, friend group was preparing together, if you can tell. Okay. So there was a little uh, physical uh, connection because we were mostly coordinating online. Hmm. So first, what happens is simple. I figure out a schedule. Uh, then I'll communicate to them. Then they give their advice. Then we modify the schedule. And it's kind of a startup journey, <laughs> to be honest. Because they find new YouTube video and new YouTube channel. They let's do. We can do this from here. I said okay, but this should be the time. And it was more coordinating thing in all till phase two. Yes. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, like, uh, um, we have talked about you that how you kept yourself motivated uh, from the UPSC to RBI. What was the reaction of your family when you said that? Okay. Uh, UPSC nahi hua, now I am focusing on RBI. Was there any kind of pressure that came or any kind of uh, uh, like was your family supportive of your decision or they were focusing more on UPSC that if you are in this journey of UPSC you should continue that only? Yes, right question. To be honest uh, what in, in my heart and also in my family's heart they believe that okay I will be given next year UPSC attempt but if I think that if I instinctively think that giving RBI is the right choice, right decision at this point of time, then yes, they support it. But of course, there was this thing in the back of the mind that I'm investing my time in something totally different, which I'm not sure if I'm able to clear the phase one also, because it was different. So it was more of a gamble. The whole RBI was a gamble. And you, you, when you cleared the RBI, so like a gamble well taken. <laughs> so yes. now, um, coming to uh, the preparation, let's start with the uh, preparation journey. Let's start with the strategy for the phase one. Now, first of all, I would like to know that how different uh, the phase one is in like prelims of UPSC and the phase one of RBI grade B. How different they are or how different your UPSC journey is from the phase one of RBI grade B. Yes. Phase one was different in, I believe, two aspects. First was uh, that the time. We get so little time in phase one exam. About all the four sections, we get so little time that it's on the first thought, it uh, completely is incomprehensible. When I told my other friends who were also part of UPS and they didn't know about the RPI, they just laughed. Okay, how can we do 80 questions in 25 minutes? Impossible. The fastest guy among us was also seriously so that was the part the ga part 25 minutes 80 questions quant part english part reasoning part reasoning part was very unbelievable and second thing is that the type of question in upsc prelim they were more of it's a conceptual question you can put your brain you can build logic around it and you can solve it but in ga part you cannot build the logic of course i found out some loopholes in that later on but initially, the thought was this. So, it was more or less, okay, English quant reasoning was similar. And GA was diff different because of the pattern and the time. Hmm. Okay. And the most difficult part in the phase one, like, is it GA, quant, reasoning or English? For me, the most difficult part was quant. Okay. Every, okay. I just hope that, okay, just clear the individual cutoff. Just make it sure you get six, seven in the marks. That's okay. all. So we have made this clear that if you are from the UPSC background, you will directly clear the phase one. You will like have a magic wand and clear the phase one. No, you have to prepare. So like now uh, you filled your uh, form. Uh, for RBI grade B and then you started preparing for the phase one. So we can say there was only one month that you got for preparing for the phase one. So what was your strategy? Because GA is vast. It is very vast. It is very factual. It is data based. You had to prepare for quant also. You had to prepare for reasoning and English also. Let's say that, okay, uh, English is not there, but GA itself is very vast. So let's talk about GAs. How are you prepared for GA in a very short span of time? Uh, initially, I was feeling okay it is vast and then there were different kind of situations you have to do last nine months current affairs one year three months hmm. 
So I like the person who said three months because I had no other choice. Hmm. So I started preparation in June. So I was okay that May, April, March I have to do. Feb and January we'll see. So I enrolled. We friends bought a course in a different coaching institution. Then we got current affairs. And as I said, it's like a startup journey. We coordinated in differentiated departments. Okay, now you will do of March. I'll do of April. Someone will do of May, and then we'll share the PDF. Then we'll read about it. Then we have to do PIB also. So, in the end, to be very frank, it seems she is syllabus is very vast. But if you coordinate and figure out what kind of questions are being asked. Initially, before before even starting on any reading or reading, I began to solve a mock test hmm. or a PYQ. So I I thought, okay, this is the question they are asking. Hmm. So now I have to focus on this all this only. Hmm. So I started. We we prepared online notes so we can edit on it. So I did. I believe last three months current affairs rigorously, hmm. and January Feb I so I think P by PIB only. Okay. So somehow it got reduced. Okay, so uh, we can see you majorly focused on the three months, and the questions, more questions are from the three months uh, period. Uh, yes. What happens it in? Uh, I was uh, relying on the mock test, which I'm planning to give, because I thought, okay, people are there in different coaching institutions. They are reading current affairs of one year. They are preparing mock tests for us. They are the more intelligent person in this field. So they'll give mock test. I'll write a mock test and I'll remember. I'll memorize every of the answer in the mock test. Eighty questions, eighty new topics, eighty things learned. Okay, that is very interesting. So we can say that uh, you prepared for three months. You also gave mock test to understand the pattern of the examination as well as to uh, get the facts also or to get uh, the. new information also so now coming to uh, the revision how much revision did you give uh, did you do for ga because it was more factual in nature right yes yes initially uh, about the ga i started preparation note preparing notes online but i found that online i cannot memorize that well so i while first revision i wrote them down on paper hmm. and then to the revision part okay the revision is very important i believe but it also depends on how much revision can you memorize it I found the factual news is kind of a game. Okay, RBI has this much percentage of uh, maybe SLR or something. So okay, now this is a game. Now, so when it became a game, it became easy to memorize. Okay. So I did. I don't know how many revision I did completely because there was not much I have to revise from. So I did four or five revision years. Okay. so if you have less time especially for the students that are starting to prepare after the notification so 3 months of the because you cannot you do not have the luxury of the time so you have to be very smart in choosing from where to read yes it is a gamble but if you are starting after a notification you have to take that gamble so sir also did he prepared for 3 months and he revised as per that now there is one more interesting thing that happened 25 minutes 80 questions and that to very lengthy it was not as per the previous patterns it was very very lengthy the questions so when you went to the examination when you started giving the exam what was the mindset ki ye to game hi change ho gaya yes 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 because uh, i practiced a lot of mock tests and hmm. that time be a very key thing in phase 1 because practicing practicing mock tests you get to know many things and fix your mind about it hmm. so on the day of the exam it was very lengthy paper yes i know and in the mock test i could clear i could uh, uh, actually read all the 80 question but in the final day i couldn't i only reached 70 374 and the time was up so and also before that after 50 or maybe 55 the questions were lengthy i couldn't see the i don't have the time to read the line by line and see the options so i just thought what's the topic do i know the option i if i can feel the option yes i think this i have written bread so i just clicked it okay. so it was very fast it was i don't know what i did on ga paper but i i could use everything that i studied okay and after like giving the ga paper there must be pressure that came in your mind ki ga ka pata nahi kaisa hua so uh, that pressure went through the quant and reasoning part also or you were like ho gaya ab i have to focus on the next part 
Well, to be honest, uh, in that exam scenario, okay, there is a pressure that now G is not completely done. But hmm. when I am solving now club quant, hmm. the pressure of solving the quant in that period is more. So I cannot like think about okay, G went like this. The okay. Quant has to be done. Then in English, the English has to be done. So after the exam, I thought okay, now the G went like this. But in that exam, okay, I don't have the luxury to think about the mistakes. True, true. So we have discussed the preparation uh, strategy for GA. Let's talk about quant reasoning. So, uh, how was the preparation for quant? How was the preparation for reasoning? Yes, quant reasoning preparation. Uh, I search a lot for hmm. where to prepare, what to prepare, and I I search many YouTube videos. Even I in EduTab also I search what how to solve. Initially, I in reasoning part. I'm talking about. I focused upon okay, I have to solve the sitting arrangement because there are many sitting arrangement. Then I spent around two three days in sitting arrangement. I know, and then I, when I solved the mock, I don't no 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 sitting arrangement cannot be done in this time. <laughs> Let's focus on other topics of the reasoning. Then in the final day of the exam, what I went with the mindset look okay that sitting arrangement problems are to be done in the last. And I think that is a counterintuitive, but I thought that okay all the other questions I will read first. Do them if time permits. I will do sitting arrangement question, also the small one. Hmm. But it uh, backfired a little on because this is my first. I was giving initially the first part of the day, so okay. there were many sitting arrangement. There were few other topics. A sitting arrangement were apparently easy, which I heard from my friends later on. So okay, but I think my strategy was good on the day exam. It got backfired, but. So if one starts to solve sitting arrangement in the initial phase, high chance they will get stuck and they will get frustrated. Okay. So about, you have about the quant part. That was firefighting approach. How can I get one marks, two marks, three marks from anywhere possible? Because quant was not my cup of tea. Uh, like you also prepare for quant and reasoning in CSAT, right? Mm -hmm. In UPSC. Yes. So, uh, how different the uh, quant and reasoning in UPSC is from the quant and reasoning in RBI Grade B? Hmm. The first thing is that uh, quant and reasoning part, the time is a first factor. Okay. Because in quant, the RBI quant, it can be solved. Hmm. But the pressure is 30 questions in 25 minutes. Hmm. You cannot afford to waste time on a wrong question you are not able to solve. Hmm. It's okay, you get the luxury of time a little more luxury. Okay. So you can choose a question, you can solve it to the end. Hmm. And about the difficulty level, the reasoning part is difficult than the UPSC one. But the quant part is more or less similar. Okay. And uh, like uh, we can say that mock tests are very important in the RBI grade B, quant and reasoning, because then you understand, okay, these type of questions I will be able to do and these type of questions I will not. And this is the fast approach that I need to take. Did you give any mock test? And what was your first mock test experience? Because you were coming from CSAT and then you gave the mock test for RBI. Yes, yes. First mock test I gave of the PYQs, like 2022's paper. And uh, to my surprise, I was able to reach in GA 70, 60 questions. So okay. I thought, okay, if I'm able to reach 70 questions, that was very quick. Click, click, click. I do not know. I thought, okay, there are a few institutions. Nitoai is the biggest one. Yeah, you can answer. So I click, click, click. Then, okay, GA can be done. English, I'm comfortable in English. So I, didn't. I thought, okay, English was the positive part. So something is there which can be done. And about the reasoning, reasoning was horrible. Quant was horrible just because I am the one, I cannot do the quant very nicely. So my friends were able to do quant, but reasoning was a perpetually bad thing in the, in the initial phase. Okay. And uh, did you not get afraid? Like you said that reasoning and quant went horrible. So were you not afraid? Ki, would I be able to do this? Am I wasting my time? Uh, I'll say what's the use of being afraid? Hmm. I started to see that a game. So I thought, okay, GA can be done, English can be done. Reasoning was interesting, but initially I was stuck in the uh, setting arrangement. And okay, other things were interesting. Venn diagram is very a game, a very good game. <laughs> so reasoning was interesting. I was fearful of the quant. Hmm. And I practiced quant 
but uh, something cannot be changed very <laughs> nicely okay so you did give many of the mock test or you uh, took the approach of uh, topics that i have to do these 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 topics uh, so you selected the topics or you went through the mock test and giving the mock test you understood the concepts and went through that uh, yes initially i started to see that okay if i strengthen my in topics then i can be good in quant or reasoning or english but later on i thought okay this is not the thing this is not working actually so i started to give mock test hmm. probably i give a lot of mock test which is seems not possible in this one month because i have to read also in mock test also mm -hmm. so i gave around 15 16 mock test i believe okay, okay. so that helps in ga part hmm. in jeli okay uh, so english we can say you uh, were preparing through something or you were only giving mock test for english no i was only giving mock test for english okay uh, in quant and reasoning just to be sure you were uh, you did prepare some topics but then you focused on the mock test right yes okay so now i think we have covered the phase 1 the strategy for the phase 1 that you adopted and now coming to the phase 2 now this time the difference between phase 1 and phase 2 was very less like the time given was very very less in the same month the phase 2 was also happening so now you, what was the strategy did you uh, in the one month that was given for the phase 1 did you also prepare for the phase 2 or you started preparing for phase 2 just after the phase 1 so what happened that i saw the syllabus of the exam one month before the exam so i thought okay phase 1 has to be done but my friend suggested that okay there are many subjects like management in phase 2 hmm. which uh, my other friend who who already got selected and i said so that you can read it highlight it and then memorize it after the phase 1 okay. so i tried the reading phase 2 the management part in the phase 1 itself but that didn't work out i started i tried 3 days to 2 hours but i thought okay no i am not able to focus because i have to focus on phase 1 so mm -hmm. majorly i prepared in those 20 days only okay okay so you started your preparation uh, serious preparation for the phase 2 after the phase 1 so you had mm -hmm. 20 days approximately so now in 20 days you have to do esi you have to do the finance you have to do management and management is completely static but it is also vast so how uh, like what was your strategy for the finance and management starting from there finance and management uh, i will start from management okay. uh, the course which i bought also gave me some pdfs of management of course there were many there were good amount of pages i believe there were 300 to 350 pages mm -hmm. and we had to highlight them uh, the plan was that okay in initial 5 6 days we'll finish the management okay and in phase 2 i bought uh, edutep's test series but then okay. i bought in a little later after one week or eight nine days so initially i completed management and some somehow i didn't found the management part of it that difficult okay it's okay it's understandable if mm -hmm. we make if we make notes out of those pdfs you can also memorize them and based upon the pyqs i know okay these are the general questions if i didn't know i have I haven't studied management as well i may write code of conduct i can write code of conduct on any day doesn't mean i have to read the management subject so okay there was one positive part that english i didn't have to do but then when i saw what the pattern of the phase 2 then there was a precise writing what i understand are precise writing is summary but i didn't know the nitty gritties of it so i watched the agitaps youtube channel the sir told me that okay now you have to write the title otherwise you miss the marks you have to write every word in your own manner and there were also passages how to read passages and you don't have to copy the same thing it's not school so i in english this i followed the same approach i learned what to do then i didn't uh, study then i didn't pre prepare or practice differently i just gave the mock test on edutel so that was that english about the finance part i got to know that we have to read certain material that rbi report and this report that report in detail so i thought okay let's skip this part hmm. i bought the brief summary and i okay if this facts come i'll write on it but i didn't it care that time much about any specific finance thing which i do not understand 
accounts and accounting and statistics i was okay we'll see what happen in exam and then i skipped the finance that time then about the esi part so i come some of felt that preparing economy is also preparing for finance because you preparing for schemes you preparing for reports again i saw the pyqs then pyqs told me that okay schemes are important reports are important then come paragraphs on it. and then come five six questions on it if you know you will get it so what happens on the actual day of exam the schemes which i prepared for economy or esi were in the finance part of the fm paper mm-hmm. so rather than a difficult finance question there was schemes question so okay i thought oh this is a bonus true so i prepared esi more or less i will say that upsc helped me in esi paper hmm hmm because now i know what generalist thing i can write if i do not know it and i know what are the key terms so if a person is starting preparing for esi all they have to know about the basic things do not like fret upon major things the basic things then know the keywords then know the get a feel of the subject you know have you have to write inclusive development it's good to write inclusive development anywhere you can write so that kind of thing true so uh, for the financial management we can say that you focused on management particularly and in that also you were focusing on different topics uh, that were like uh, you know that some of the topics you can write yourself so not on those topic but on the difficult ones you focused on that you prepare for that when coming to finance you left it like majorly you were like ye to nahi hoga to but uh like there we can say the luck was with you that in the finance paper this time it usually didn't happen that the schemes are being asked in the finance uh, but this time it happened so with your hard work your luck was also there so mm-hmm. now luck is the part of the plan we do not consider so <laughs> true 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 uh so now coming to esi you said that uh, the preparation was somehow done in upsc majorly the overall preparation was there uh, so we can understand that yes esi if you are preparing for ga also that means schemes reports you are preparing for esi in a way yes sir so uh, when you were doing the objective coming to the objective and descriptive part of the exam so when you were doing the objective of the finance and management the finance question you left the static ones actually sir to be honest when i was preparing i didn't know what is finance what is economy it's hard to separate them for me because i didn't had the very previous knowledge so i was majorly preparing for economics the reports because reports were overlapping somehow schemes were also overlapping and rbi report and economic survey and few other things they were overlapping so because if i read, uh, read something on rbi report i will definitely if i'm writing a descriptive answer on economy i will write it hmm. so it was overlapping but i didn't watch any videos about specifically finance that okay these this oh, two days before the exam i was thinking i have left finance what to do so then i downloaded a few pdfs which are core finance sebi this report these are the things i thought okay if i just read the numbers might the numbers might click on the exam day but i left it after one hour i thought okay cannot be done so we not fret about it mm. and objective part so now i think i'm sound making it sound easy but uh, the schemes and report is not easy hmm. the schemes were very rigorous and in an exam they even ask very minor scheme which we, even the coaching institutions haven't heard of so schemes we made a thorough table online thorough table when we keep updating it we read from pb pib pdf edutep schemes pdf then we updated kept on updating it rem- rem- memorized it highlighted scheme i did thoroughly about the report i report department was me i have to do the reports so i th- i saw that they are asking the major reports only schemes they are asking the minor schemes or reports they are asking major reports only hmm. so report got uh, stuck also i got a hit on imf report or maybe the world bank report so okay those were the brownie points because i know this is a major reports world prospects reports hmm. so okay this this can be asked so reports schemes and objective part other than that was uh, this is the i was relying on the okay so and management you had done uh, thoroughly we can say so you were able to do the objective part of the management mostly the management was that 15 questions 25 marks you can afford only to lose 2 to 3 marks maximum 
you cannot afford to lose more marks management has to be done thoroughly mm-hmm. i had to remember okay these i had to remember memorize it about the finance part okay i thought okay something might get a hit and there are other questions somehow i didn't find the finance part very difficult this time there was one paragraph which was out of the blue for me mm-hmm. one of my friends who were from the finance background he thought that, that was so easy i thought okay this ke liye sabse aadhi mark lagaya wohi sabse aasan but the thing is i even attempted that also okay. because you can use somehow logic there is a paragraph and you can write it so that was good luck again uh so now uh, coming to the descriptive part so it has the finance like uh, 10 marks section and 15 marks section right so uh, what was your strategy there in finance and management my strategy was i was relying on management as i have told so i saw the pyqs then i figured okay there are two sections three questions three questions and when i saw the questions it was not that three questions one section is for management one for finance it was jumbled Hmm. So I thought, okay, I have to attempt four questions. If I am able to write three questions on management, then I only have to write one question on finance. And I also thought that in every section there is one finance question which is general. Hmm. Like the finance question was very serious finance question. One finance question was general. So I thought, okay, maybe we'll see. So in the real exam also, I found out that similar pattern was followed. And P Y Q helped again. that i attempted three questions from management two from one section and other section i one management one finance that i remember the finance question was ondc i was like ondc i can write anything but i it's not like some other person has a big advantage over me in ondc they might know the similar facts or similar stuff about ondc but management again it is uh, you have to have command over it hmm. so they were very there were other cool stuff about the preparation as well which i borrowed from upsc i say that in management if you write just the management stuff that won't work that won't fetch the marks you have to write stuff which is the examiner is not expecting for example if i am writing henry henry fayot's 14 principles in each ex, in each principle i have to give the example and the example should be totally different than management example would be given of gandhi maybe tagore some uh, in indian national movement um, leaders or uh, maybe ancient ashoka or elon musk It's like the variation of example but the examiner should be surprised that okay he understand it those we understand it but somehow the exam pattern we are caged in that thing if you think out of the box and write it we can fetch good marks but i don't know the marks but i think i i would have scored good in management and one more stuff is that in economy yes i part just make a list of facts and figures and stats and keywords mm-hmm. a different notebook for these thing only just write the fact and keyword wherever possible doesn't okay. matter doesn't matter the question just somehow fit it fit in okay so uh, in this we can say more than smart uh, like more than luck there was also smart work we say na luck hai luck hai but you also put your smart work that you saw the previous year questions you understood the pattern of the descriptive uh, a descriptive portion of the exam and then you understood that okay i can try three management because this is the time that i have and i can't do much about it so yes i have to focus more on management because the static questions will come from there and in the finance yes there will be at least one question that will be current affairs based so i will be able to do that or i will push with that question so yes it's not all, always the luck alone you have to do some smart work to make that luck also work for you so the, based yes. upon uh, based upon luck you one person can get nowhere because mm-hmm. see now uh, in the upsc final result i was blaming my luck and how can i rely on luck in the rbi exam I don't rely on luck even. I am talking about luck right now because luck can only be told about in retrospective manner. But on the day of the exam, on the preparation, you only have to use logic and things which logic, smart work, even hard work as well. True. If I have to add one or two more things about strategy, which worked very well for me, I was advised with my friend that what happens in descriptive part that it is. that it is also a time restraint thing so people the questions can be left on the day of exam it's pressure also 90 minutes you have to write many words 
so one b- beautiful thing is that in descriptive just write in points hmm. it's a very common typical knowledge for upsc aspirant but hmm. i think in rbi because the notes are not in a points format the notes are in a paragraph format i think people start to write paragraph and if they write start to write paragraph they cannot cover many points hmm. they they might lose they might they cannot complete the paper as well hmm. so if you write in points if you give example statistics i think it will be very beneficial if an rbi aspirant use uh, upsc mains answer style in this because when you combine both the things it becomes good and one more thing uh, that in phase 1 uh, sorry for jumping in ga part initially my friends were only attempting uh, 40 questions 50 questions because they thought okay which of which we can guess more than 80% surety will attempt those and they were get, getting less marks initially i did this on one day then i thought okay no 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 i attempted i was planning to attempt more than 70 questions i was i was only leaving those questions which questions of the name that this organization who is the chairman and i didn't know so okay four names are there i cannot care guess on name on a funny side i also tried to guess name on the mock test but uh, somehow it got correct also so attempt more questions because the, the mathematics people know more than the ratio somehow is that you will attempt more question the probability of getting more marks is higher okay so these are some uh, things that the aspirants can learn from you and uh, yes smart work is also there you have to understand the pattern of the examination you have to understand the uh, the type of questions that are asked uh, that are being asked as well as if you see the previous year questions there is always a level up that rbi is doing so through that also you can understand that okay this time also i can be surprised and then you will be prepared for that kind of surprise also so this is a idea that the previous year questions or the mock test also provide you so now i think we can uh, we have discussed much about the esi uh, like there is one question that uh, is regarding esi that in the descriptive paper there were direct reports that came so were you comfortable with those reports or did you put some trick on that of course trick because the report i believe there was one report about the refugees there was question i had to attempt the question because the other question was very out of the syllabus i didn't know so the thing is when i came out of the exam my friends were saying okay this report we didn't know and other people were also saying and i saw on the youtube also people were complaining that okay i thought okay the report was there on refugee crisis mm, it doesn't agree. matter what is the what migration, migration. migration yes you know about migration you know about refugee you know about the organization as well 80% of the reports are same they will put the generalistic thing migration should be this country should allow this they should not be sent back to their home country i wrote the generalistic stuff in a manner that okay this was written in the report i didn't care if there is authenticity or not because it has to be authentic because the thing is general they must have written this in report True, true. So I fill the the gaps of ESI by using this. Yes. So yes, when you get lemons, you have to make lemon juice. And the question was there. You had to attempt it. So you ha- you had to do something. So at least yeah. write instead of uh, being like starting blaming the examination. You have to write something. So put your logic, put your understanding of the concept at least. That's why I say that static points are sometimes important. If you know about migration, if you know about a particular organization, you will be at least able to write something. So you need to have the basic understanding of the ESI static also. Definitely, it's kind of a very battle zone. You have a weapon, you cannot change a weapon at the battle, and now you have to use them. It doesn't matter the opponent has what weapon. You have to use your weapon. in whichever manner you want and similarly in finance management paper descriptive part the question was henry fuel's 14 principles hmm. of course i had them in my notes but every person might have them in notes but it's difficult to remember 14 points hmm. i instinctively knew that this question might come i prepared well but on the day of exam even i forgot it when i was like thinking that this is a predictable question this can come because it didn't came in last many years so i forgot it i didn't know the 14 things and then after the exam my friends were saying we wrote eight we wrote uh, nine we wrote six i thought ye kaisi baatein hui 
they were asking for team henry fuel was a journalistic man he was telling about management how to management functions or something i wrote 14 principles i created them so that was also a gamble that examiner might thought okay he is gambling but i don't think henry fuel might have deviated from those point which i have wrote because that was journalistic thing okay it's logical Log- if you use logic in the exam it will work okay so now i think we can uh, talk about english so for the english uh, segment of the examination did you prepare separately or you were comfortable ki english i can do descriptive english i was uh, comfortable but i was not comfortable i was like okay i don't have the luxury hmm. so i was i had to be comfortable in my skin that okay i have i will do english then and there i didn't prepare for an, any essay topic press writing i did practice i hmm. i told i watched the videos in the videos the sir also were giving uh, practice presses so i tried practice pressing presses writing paragraph no i didn't do any thing for the paragraph and also the thing is that you have to complete the paper on the time hmm. and it is typing thing ha huh. so the one of the wonder of my friends and my family was okay all this time you have written from pen so now you have to write an descriptive answer with typing so it becomes difficult unfortunately thing was with me that i was preparing notes online so i had some command over typing i was not a completely beginner or noob in a sense so i bought a keyboard because laptop keyboard are very smooth the other keyboard was very interesting <laughs> you have to get a hang of it in 2 3 days okay and uh, so the major task of english was to complete the paper in a time mm-hmm. and as we were talking luck the opposite side of luck was on the day of the exam while i was writing english in english i believe it was the last paper of the day and i was tired also after writing the essay of 600 word maybe my computer got hanged hanged it got hung i don't know how many keys i pressed at the same time it got stop i couldn't do anything so it got so i tried to do things my own but it didn't work so then i had to in the, between the exam i had to go to a place it was a large hall i have to reach the coordinator then he came then he had to restart the whole computer and in my mind all i was thinking that okay doesn't matter time goes if essay got deleted because it was not complete it didn't save i didn't move on to the other presses writing if essay got deleted then i have to write it again and i have to be i don't know if i can write the same thing again hmm. so that was a moment of maybe 20 10 12 minutes okay i was i just sat back on my chair i thought okay cannot be done so relax i think i'm done he is doing its work then the examiner told it won't be deleted and i thought okay it won't be deleted time i'll try to manage okay that is really uh, surprising and interesting that okay this happened because the pc is shutting down that is a very big thing when you are when you are in the examination because it d- does something with your mind it short like your mind short circuits that what happened and yes if uh, i can understand that how it troublesome it must have been you had to call the coordinator and everything so yeah is yes the s experience that are seeing this video the seeing this interview they must understand that yes things happen and you have to be like ready for such kind of things also that happened with prashant so now i think we can move to the interview part so how was the interview did they not ask because you are from iit delhi so did they not ask that uh, why not private sector why government job and something like this uh, on the day of the interview they didn't ask this but i i was preparing about this because this is a very obvious question hmm. so in the mock to interviews i gave with ajutep uh, the respected sir did ask me this and but on the day of interview no they didn't ask okay and what were the kind of questions that were asked in the actual interview uh, actually interview that uh, they did, they did ask a question about my background from college because i i graduated in engineering physics so by physics they asked me a question on physics Okay. and to be very honest the first question they asked that okay we'll ask one question on physics and they asked me and i didn't know okay the first question of the interview i didn't know then they helped me and then after that i was able to grab few things of that question okay, okay I said, sorry sir i am sir told that okay we asked this because it's only 2 3 years from graduation and 
I thought, okay, this is not a good start. But uh, the thing was in my mind, I was saying sorry, but in my mind was next question I have to speak very calmly and this thing. The next question they asked me, you want to ask me? No, continue. You can continue. Then they asked me about the GDP of India. Then they switched to economics. Okay. And trust me, I answered that question. There were three, two, three questions. GDP, how it is calculated, when it, who calculates it and hmm. other stuff. That was, I knew the thing. Hmm. I, I, know, I didn't know exactly everything on the question, but I knew about 80%. I hmm. made sure that sir is listening and I am speaking to the clear the clarity of my voice at hmm. most confident because I want to compensate the last question so I was I spoke that question answer very I think brilliantly <laughs> so we can say that uh, instead of uh, getting the set back what you can do that you can uh... Try to give the next answers very well because usually the mindset will be okay. I was not able to give the answer of this question. I have done very horrible thing. Now I will not be able to clear the examination. So this is the thought pattern that starts. And this is a very, very normal thing that happens with all of us. But from there, you have to go to the positive side that, okay, I was not able to give the right answer. So let, let me try to give the right answer of the next one and in a very amazing way. So a very good thought uh, system that you have, I can say, and many experience can learn that from you. Because like, usually we have this mindset that we see the negative things. You have to go to the positive things to clear the exam at least. Actually, in interview, there is one good loophole, I'll say. Because one like uh, positive aspect for the aspirants. Because you can compensate your mistake in there. Hmm. I knew I did a mistake because it was a very silly question. If I tell my friends, my friends laughed at me. When I told them that my first question, I didn't know. They said, Are you doing what are you doing? Then, but uh, it can be compensated. That's the thing. After that, I was thinking that, okay, I have to compensate it. Hmm. And I believe interview things can be compensated. So it is a positive thing. Uh, was there any question from finance management? Management? No. Finance, uh, same same thing. They it's overlapping to economics. Do they also ask me about the uh, in inflation rate, the okay. MPCs, uh, Monetary mm -hmm. Policy Committee, and mm -hmm. how it's done? And okay, finance the RBI. I think they asked me about RBI as well. So mm -hmm. there was good question that uh, what is the purpose of RBI fundamental? Mm -hmm. What is the fundamental purpose of commercial banks? What happens if there is no RBI? Mm -hmm. Why? In Indian context, this was a good discussion. Why is Indian context, the central bank is more important than in the context of other developed countries. Okay. I try to explain them that it builds people's trust. Hmm. RBI is not just a central bank. It is It upholds the trust of the people. Hmm. So that was a, a good discussion. Okay. Okay, I can understand that. Yes, the questions were conceptual as well as they were testing your knowledge, I can say. So was there any question that you have given the UPSC exam, you have reached till the interview stage and that also very recently. So was there any question that uh, you are going to give UPSC again or something like this? Initially, when they asked me about what were you doing last three days, three years. So the UPSC point came up but they didn't ask any confrontational question like this. They asked me what was your optional. Then after hearing my optional, which was political science, ma'am did ask me questions on political science. She asked me that what are the problems the world is facing and on similar lines. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I thought now the interview is over. The one, the sir, the member who had already asked the questions. And he again pointed out and he said, okay, Prashant, I have two questions for you. Just give me very brief answer. The first question is that your hobby, right? In your hobby, you wrote in a hobby that which did you play guitar? So he asked me that which kind of guitar you play. Hmm. And second thing, he asked me, will you give again? Will you give an attempt again? In UPSC. So, in UPSC, yes. So I said yes, sir. And he didn't want to listen my explanation. I don't know, but. Uh, I prepared this question. I uh, initially was prepared, thought, thinking that I won't say hmm. that I att attempt again. But then I thought it makes no sense. It's, it doesn't sound logical. And if I'm not honest, I won't be able to defend it. Hmm. If I'm honest, I'll be able to defend it in some hmm. way. Hmm. So I showed honesty there. And I said, yes, sir. And I also said, sir, 
RBI is a great opportunity. And if I just said it, he didn't want to listen it because he just wanted yes or no. I just said in the flow without, I didn't care if I was interrupted. I said, this, sir, if I am getting this, this service, I'll, that's the only condition I leave RBI. Otherwise, RBI is a great service. I just said it because I wanted to say it. Say it. Then the interview was over. Then the chairman sir, said, okay, thank you, Krishna. We understand. So no one scolded you after the uh, interview was over? Your friends, that what have you done? Why did you do this? You could have said no. That yes, now I want RBI. So no one scolded you? Initially, like just before, the, two, three days before the interview, I was, I prepared a paragraph that, okay, if they asked me, and so no, sir, I gave attempt in UPSC, now I won't give RBI is the thing. But then it was not feeling right. As I told you about the instincts, it was not feeling right. And in the exam as well, in the interview as well, I was not supposed to explain. It was, should be in a limbo. Okay. He said, yes, we'll see what we'll do about your yes. So but uh, that went right because somehow I didn't say it in a very uh, rude manner or some in an accent manner. I said it because that was the honest answer. Because if he didn't hear the context, he might have taken it in a other way. Hmm. So I just wanted to show that he knows the context. Okay. Yes. So you have to show the positivity that you have or the honesty that you have. That even if you do, you are not uh, demeaning an organization to get into another organization. You know that how important RBI is. Just you also want some other things in your life, I can say. Uh, yes, you were adding something. No, I was just saying honesty is the best policy. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. So now uh, we are at the end of the session. And do you have any message for the aspirants out there? Message as we are talking about this, the whole journey, which I didn't uh, played in my mind before we talked, is just that uh, I had to convince some of my friends to give the exam. So because it was a change of path. But there's one important thing we should know that we should not give up before trying. Giving up before trying is a waste of everything. So not give up on trying and and the scheduling part is very important. If a, if a, there's a new person who wants to prepare for RBI, the best thing is he or she should think that, okay, it is doable. Build a faith upon it. Do not give up on that thing right now. As I cleared, I didn't know it was that about the notification. Before four or five days, the, it, the notification was out a month ago. I had to fill the form. I had to make sure my friends fill the form. So giving up is a waste of time and build a faith upon it and prepare strategy as well, I'll say. Because scheduling is very important. Scheduling is a key part of things. Schedule it well, try to stick to it. And I remember on the day of phase two, everyone, because there were people who have very serious face. If you have faces like they will score it 99 out of 100 in every paper. But I... In a more humorous sense, I made jokes upon them and it keeps the mood light. So the whole profession should be a game, a puzzle to solve. I think that, okay, if we reach this stage, we'll enjoy it. If we reach this stage, we'll do this. So it somehow the positivity comes back to you. True. It it was real. It is a really great interview and uh, I'm really grateful that you joined uh, here and you uh, came for this interview. It was really great talking with you. Thank and you. like the message is also very appropriate. It is also very like direct. The words that you have said, many of the words can be used as a quote. And <laughs> like you should copyright that. So yes, a really great message that the aspirant should learn from. And thank you so much for coming, Prashant. Thank you.